Here I am back again, showing our little uh, tech tip. I'm going to show you how to make all that there, all this section here, and make it look like it's original. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm going to start off first by showing you this piece that I got. This is an original quarter panel section. Well, it was a piece that was replaced on the car. It was another quarter put on it. It wasn't properly installed and there was a major issue with gaps. I had to readjust the gaps up here, widen them up. Uh, this corners were nowhere near where they should be. This panel was, uh, this body line here was not even lined up. The body line was somewhere up around here, so I had to cut it off. I had to extend the bottom of the quarter panel down so I can get this piece to fit properly. So I had to trim off all this here, so all I was left with was the outer skin section, so I had nothing for inside the door. Now, as you can see, all this in here is gone. So I gotta make this up. Now you would probably want to make up a little template, try to figure this out. But you realize it's got a green and it's got to come straight out and it's curved this way and it's also curved this way. So it's a bit of a tangle of a piece to make. This process works the same on doing around windows and stuff like that as well on a back window. If you're having rusty back windows, then usually all the bottoms rusted out. This little process that I'm doing here now is much the same thing. It can be used in a dozen different places on the car, but I'm going to show you here on the inside door edge. So all I got done is I got this piece of metal here, just cut it up, just trimmed it up enough so it fit, and I just slide it in there like so. It's, it's bigger than what it is, it should be, it's just trimmed up, it sticks in farther here, it goes in past it, it sticks out past it here. Right. All I'm concerned about right now is getting this plane and this plane the same, so this here will flow from one to the other. I'm not concerned about wastage or anything inside or whatnot. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this piece of metal here, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to tack weld it in place here, and uh, I'll show you the next step after that. Now here, a quick little look at this, what I got done. Because you can see up here, it lines up and the flows on, sticks in past, spot welded on, again, it's never ever pretty. We can see where it all hangs out on the bottom and everything is going along there. I just got tack welded from the outside. Then when you close the door, I can look in and I'm happy with my gap and everything that's going to be there. That will be the, original, that'll be the door gap then when it's done. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up for this piece here now. So I'm going to set up here now and start making the piece that will fit in here. Okay, all I have is just took a piece of tin, it's a little bit longer. I want it longer this way because when it falls down, it's going to uh, get shorter on this end here. So hopefully this piece here will work out pretty good. But you can see roughly how long it is. It only needs from this point to this point here. So all I'm gonna do now is just rough it in uh, to get a start getting a shape to it. You can see the way it's gonna have to go like that. So I'm gonna cut two of them off and test fit it again. See, I'm getting a little bit closer. So now I can turn around and uh, play around with the marker a little bit more and just set it up here, like so, to follow that plane. That looks pretty good there. I'll cut that off there. I don't see what that fits like. Look at that, look, I'm getting close. I'm gonna go fine tune that, prep it all up. As you can see now, it's, it's starting to come closer and it's in here because I want this to come straight up this way here and straight up this way. But I'm not getting overly fussy with it because this is gonna have to be on an angle like this anyway. So I'm gonna dress this up a bit more and clean it up and get a nice fit and clean up this piece of metal and we'll go from there. All right, so here's the piece I got made up. All I did is I just kept cutting it away and then I took a grinder 
a simple little grinder like this here and just grind the DH so I can get it to fit proper the whole point and there I got my fit it is pretty good back here on this corner I trimmed out this corner here so it fit in underneath the corner piece so I get a nice tighter fit I'm not worried about this excess up here again I've done this before in other, in other videos you got something to hold on to now see so I can set this up I took a marker and marked this along here so I get an idea of where my gap is too, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack weld that right on there now. I'm happy where it's too. There you have it. Got that tack well in place. Doesn't look like much. It looks uh, pretty rough looking. Uh, but the, it, the bit, all you're concerned about is getting your corners and this out here uh, tack welded and in place. So you, you know you get your planes right. This plane is right. This plane is right. This plane is right. All this here, you can work with that and grind it all up and dress it up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, as you can see, I have to spot weld it in place. Now that I got it all fitted where I want to, I'm going to take this off, bring it over to the bench, and I'm going to start welding it all up. And okay, quick little break. I'm going to show you simple uh, the tools that I use to basically do all my metal fabrication. What you see there on the bench is what I basically make everything out of. I got no fancy tin snips. Uh, I've used, I have a drawer full of them. I haven't used them in years. I use them for small things every now and again. Mostly I use them for cutting up these wheels. That's what I use them for. Uh, but for the most part, good hammer and dolly. Where's my dolly gone? Dolly's not around. But anyway, good hammer and dolly. Mostly I don't use the dolly a lot because it's mostly just fitting stuff in. Tip of wool marker. Grinder for cutting to clean up the edges and clean off the metal. The cutting wheel. And a good uh, grinding wheel with a stone on it. And a die grinder for inside edges. And that's the extent of making any panels. Um, I've gotten into, I find with the grinders, it's so much faster. I got two of them on the go, for the simple fact you don't have to change these over. This one's modified. The guard, I, don't, I believe, and you got to have a guard on everything. This guard's been modified to made bigger, and it's cut back. So you got more distance on it. But still you got the protection against your hands, because if these books explode, I can tell you they are nasty if they explode so but and just by cutting them back as they usually go straight across this way on the guards and all I do is I just cut back the guard right here just so you got more area to cut with as you can see right but you still have the protection of your hand because when that explodes at the last place you don't want that is in the in the into that knuckle there into that hand anywhere because you're usually holding the grinder like so so if that explodes it's pretty bad I see so many people using these grinders cutting wheels Without a guard, it's scary. Okay, back to the project. Now, what would you call that? Right in home. Mother would have your head, wouldn't she? <clears throat> but that's it. That's basically all I got done. Is two, uh, three pieces of metal welded together. The three planes are there. This plane is here. This plane is here. This plane is here. There's nothing pretty. Uh, I'll weld it all up and I'll grind away what I don't need. And there's one little trick I'm going to do. Mostly, some people just end up welding this out here on the outer edge. But you, I always like having this edge out here. I'll show you later. Um, really nice and clean, so it looks original. And I'll explain why. I'll get into that later. But what I end up doing is I end up welding this entire backside here, inside as well. So then I got a bit of build here. So that when I go to dress up this outer edge, it looks it looks original, and you haven't got to worry about it. All right, I'm going to weld all this up clean it all up and I'll be back it's all welded up on the inside here is all welded this outer edge again nothing pretty inside is welded as well I find when you're making these panels up it's best to weld them inside now it, it's a lot easier and like I haven't really covered it but if you notice that I'm, I'm doing this off the car I find any time like you try to do this on the car it can turn into a nightmare and if you've got pieces like this that you got to add to the car, make three or four pieces into one, it's best to do it in a panel 
even if you got to cut the piece out of the car to do the repairs or make up a new piece, right? <coughs> As you can see here, also, I also marked where I got to cut along after before I took the panel off. Now, some of the little quick little tricks. Tricks. If you notice that each panel is a little bit longer than the one before, this one here, I find that if you have both of them the same length, trying to weld this corner becomes a tangle. If you're welding it, you can wander off into the next piece, which will bring up this edge flush, which usually works. As you can see, I got it done here. You can wander off into that one there for the welding, right? It's just, you know, never be concerned about having a perfect fit. As long as you've got your shapes and everything there, you're going to make a fit perfect later on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dress this up. One of the advantages of doing this weld in here now is that I can grind every bit of this off now and make it all nice and smooth and roll that edge just like a factory lipped edge. You wouldn't be able to do that if you just welded it on the outside of the car. You could do it, but you'd have chances of this splitting and cracking again. But where you got it welded on the inside now as well, there's lots of strength there. For, to give yourself a nice dressed edge. So I'm going to dress up all these edges and everything here now, trim this up so it all fits and cut up that piece on the inside and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Remember that tab of metal that I left on this here? Look, another good reason why you can keep it on it. Now it's nice and solid on the bench. I'm not going to damage my piece of running in here because this is all uh, excess out here. So now i got this nice and secure on the bench so I can grind all this up. So, just having these big old tabs on, there's lots of uses for them. And there you have it. Here's the piece made up. Nice little edge on it. You can see this rolled edge now. It's nice and round and smooth. It uh, looks the part. Almost looks like a stamp piece. Right? But then when you flip it over, it's made out of three pieces. I've used this technique for a lot of years. Uh, doing a lot of rust repair. You kind of got a tendency to uh, try to dream up ideas. And figure out things. Uh, I'd show you here. Uh, I've done it many times on back windows of cars, but I can show you here on the front window of this car here. Uh, right here, this section here. I've often had cars, all this here would be gone. I'd use the same process. I'd make this piece up, I'd make this piece up, and I'd make this piece up. And I weld it all together, fit it, and you end up having an you probably be trying to patch something together and you have an edge here when you go to do filler work or an edge work down here and it'd be so hard to get this to look right but doing this process and then doing a nice job on your edges here which is in this case here is this section here when it come time to weld in these corners and uh, doing filler work you wouldn't be left with a high spot here trying to uh, to get it to fit and you end up grinding it down and what ended up happening you're grinding through it and you have a hole there and whatnot but it's a very nice little quick simple little setup uh, it works great I'm gonna go install this now and uh, we'll go from there there you have a rough test fit all, right. all fits in there pretty good you can see where it goes up along the top edge and down underneath Close the door here, push in on it, and you can see they nice seam, body line lines up. Just a matter of now split this, cut this across here, and same with inside here. Do the same thing along here and trim this all up, well, this in solid. And there you have it. <clears throat> all butt welded in place. The cornered edge here is right nice, it flows into this panel here, and this flows down to the bottom. This here is all been butt welded into the inner structure, spot welded in underneath and along the edge here into the wheel well. All your seams looks good up along there, it's flush this way, flush this way. It's a really good process, I hope you like that one. Well there you go, that's another uh, tech tip done and over with. Uh, it's a great little tech tip. Uh, you ever do cab corners on pickup trucks? Uh, like I was saying earlier, round windows, a lot of early GM cars, 60s cars, the back windows, the lower valves underneath the back window used to rot out of them. I've repaired a number of them and using that process. Uh, like cab corners, the same thing. Uh, being a bodyman, 30 years, uh, you kind of, when you be applying filler, hated these cornered edges that someone had put on and buggered up on stuff. and. I just naturally figured, you know, let's see if we can figure out a way to make these corner edges nicer. So uh, that's what I uh, come up with. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. 
and uh, until the next one.